meet literary icons only on the program Book to Art, Dot Television Asaba, after 10 a.m. every Wednesday. Do the art, stay smart. Sometimes I wonder what is in the mind of that author when they decide to pen down uh, what they have uh, in their head. Most especially they say, well, they get inspired. Sometimes they tell you, mm, um, it's because of the environment. You know, the environment tells me what to write. And sometimes it's what happened in the past. It could be issues and issues. Uh, so much of that, that they have in their head. And they want to pen it down for others to read. and learn if it's one that would instill morals most times what you write it's either fiction it's either action sometimes it's a thing that you have to learn from the program is book to act on Delta television the people's pride and as usual on the program would we'll have a, a normal segment which is the profile and then would we'll also take on literary works but our guest today is making a third appearance because he has seven books already published and we've actually digressed on about four books and today we're going to be taking three books but well, one with the same title volume one and two and the other just on its own so we will not take on this profile today we'll go straight into the trial works let's fill his pause on uh, his books the first one we have here it's my body but not my face and the other one bothers on the testimony of john 14 6 abide in ministry there's a volume one and volume two. But just before we do that, here is my guest. Hello, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You know, there, I actually thought of um, doing purple today. And for some reason, I brought it out from my closet and then I took it back. I said, well, let me just do this. Maybe today that I've been all purple. Well, you were in the spirit. I'm but it didn't connect you, well. I, it, it, didn't, it didn't connect well. I should have just done that. <laughs> it didn't connect well. <laughs> but it's okay. It's a pleasure to have you again. It's always a so, delight. Thank mm. you so much for the now, opportunity. Always, no? Mm. We give it to Delta Television and, of yeah, course, yes. the general manager. Um, my body, but not my face. This book resonates. I kept looking at it. For, for the, for the first time, I was like, let me look at this and imagine what this book has to has an aid to share. I couldn't connect with it. Because the, the title is all encompassing, sort of, my body, but not my face. Then some would say, it could be a story book, it could be a Christian book. But what were your thoughts? Okay, the, the book actually deals with three chapters okay. of Matthew. Chapters 5, 6, and 7. Okay. And in a word, the they form the core, the template of what a Christian is supposed to be. The character of a Christian, when you see him on the road, in his workplace, at home, you know this is a Christian. Okay. But unfortunately, that has not been the case. Uh, basically, we all as Christians departed from this template. And so this book is like a wake-up call to return to the basics okay. so that we can truly represent our master and you know one of the best gospel one of the best preacher is yourself okay. the way you carry on the way you live the way you respond to issues uh, these things mark you out as a christian and so we find the situation where the body is the body of christ but the face doesn't look like the face of Jesus Christ. Okay. And so that's why I, I entitled it My Body, but, but not, not My, my face. face. Wow. Yeah, because you, you recognize somebody not by the body, basically, but by his face. That is why Jacob recognized in the morning that the woman he slept with was not Rachel, but Leah. Okay. Uh -huh, because the ah, faces were different. That's true. Uh, that's the truth of the matter. <laughs> All right, can we say that that summarizes the book, uh, My Body But Not My Face, or yes, do you it, have more to the summary? It, it, it does, because inside it, I began to take each of the, they call that uh, section the Beatitudes, okay. or the Sermon on the Mount. And it's in stages. 
you know, uh, you need to do this, you need to be that. For instance, blessed are those who have no harbor, who don't harbor evil in their hearts. Because it, blessed are those who are, who are pure okay. in heart, because they will see God. It's a very serious statement. That's true. Uh, because out of the heart of a man proceeds everything. Obviously. Evil, now, good, whatever. Now, um, that's uh, more like a summary of uh, this book, My yes. Body But Not My Face. But uh, I know that um, going through this book, uh, this book is um, 96 pages with 13 chapters. Mm -hmm. And soon we'll feel your literary work, uh, chapter one of it, um, that reads an ambassador. But just before we take on that, what is most remarkable about this book for you? Okay, what's remarkable about is that I believe that Christ wants the church. The Bible says he's coming back for a bride without blemish. Okay. That means someone who is a new wife to be, so to say, and has no stain, no past history, no scratch, as it, as it were. But that's not what we have. Okay. Yes. All right, let's um, delve into your work. Um, don't worry, it's your book, so you don't have to open yours. That's okay. <laughs> have to read it. Permit me to read it. Okay. Now, chapter one of my body, but not my faith. I'm going to own this book at this moment. I will own this paragraph at this moment, even if I'm not the, the author. But with his permission, he says I can own this paragraph. So let me read it. Now, it reads, One of the greatest tragedies of life is the tragedy of ignorance, underline ignorance. It is worse than sickness itself. No wonder Osea chapter 4 verse 6 declares, My people perish for lack of knowledge. A renowned Christian teacher and evangelist, Dr. Miles Moron, lamented this state of affairs when he said that, If you want to hide anything from an African black man, write it in a book. That's a fact though. If the tribe of ignorant Africans, the Christian, is the worst, yes, of the tribe of ignorant Africans, the Christian is the worst offender. While it is difficult, if not impossible, for instance, to find a Muslim who has never read the Quran once, millions of Christians have never read the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation even once, despite the fact that they own and often carry it about. While, for instance, the Muslims begin to learn, memorize, and recite the Quran from age 4 years and 14 days, the Christian never bothers to look at his Bible. Yet, is the basic instruction from God to man before leaving the earth. Bible. That's that's the acronym for it. Actually. Yes. Okay. So let's rest here, and I wanted to speak to this paragraph. What's your opinion on it? It summarizes everything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it summarizes the being of the Christian. Yeah, well, that's true. Mm, it it Christians too. don't even. No, I, I don't think don't. they don't read it, but they just carry they the Bible. They don't. Sometimes they even sleep with the Bible. They put it all yeah. under the pillow yeah. for protection. It's, as a well. it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. <laughs> it's a big tragedy. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Uh, and you know, when you begin to read the Bible, you see the enormous power that is embedded in the Word of God. That's true. Not only that, you see the value that God places on His children. You see the strength, and if you like, the enormity of the love that God has for His children. And that's why the, that first page talks about the ambassador. Now listen to me. An ambassador is appointed. And when he's appointed, he doesn't need to struggle to get a car or a house or even the money to, to, to move from his uh, country to his place of appointment. All those things are provided by the appointing authority. And when he gets to his place of assignment, he doesn't need to go to the market to buy clothes or food or whatever. The country provides for that. 
If he's sick, the country provides for, for that treatment. Absolutely. And that is to enable him to concentrate on doing the work of an ambassador. An ambassador is like the president representing his country in another country. And I can tell you that the president of Nigeria, like, Nigeria takes care of him and his family completely. If he's, if he's uh, you know, somebody who is a little bit stingy, he can keep his salary for the number of years he's going to be the president. That's true. And keep them in the bank because the country takes care of him. The same thing happens to the ambassador. But what we have in present day Christianity, we have turned Christianity to Jim, Jim, uh, Jimmy Christie. <laughs> yeah. All we pray is give me this, give me that. Give me this, give me that. Give me this, give me that. Yes. They say when, when you pray, yeah, give me you, this, give me that. You sow the seed. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, there was a time I, I was invited to a, you know, a church and I just said, okay, let me give it a try. Let's see what, what, what they have to offer. And they said there was a program in church. So I went and it was supposed to be an all night program. But, you know, I was so disappointed. You know, I felt maybe what they were doing, I mean, I felt it was actually, you know, Christian beats, pure spiritual beats. But when I got there, the man of God they were expecting to come and preach, you know, and tend to the, to the, the flock, which is us there, was just talking about money. It was, if you, if who has, who has um, so and so money, if you can, you know, you can sow a hundred thousand and now, get 300,000. You'd be surprised what the Lord <laughs> will do for you. The next no, day. no. If you have this, you'd be surprised what the Lord will do for you the next yes. day. Yes. And that went on and on and on. Yes. I was, I was disappointed. And that was the last of it. Yeah, and that has turned the Christian to a Jimmy. Gimme, 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 gimme. My name is Jimmy. And that's not supposed to be so. That's the true. Bible expertly says in Matthew 6, 3, 6, and seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go and do the work of an ambassador. And everything you require to perform your work will be given to you. All right, uh, for one of time, um, I'd want us to let this rest. Let's concentrate on the volume one and volume okay. two of the testimony of John 14, okay. 6, okay. abiding ministry. Now, I know this, just as it sounds, testimony. Uh, this book um, um, bothers more on testimonies. But what would fill your pause on that? What um, God did. Let's find out the content of this book and let's see how rich the content of the testimony of John 14, 6, abiding ministry is. Volume one and two. How rich is this content? They are very rich. Awesome. They told them are very <laughs> rich. I, know, I can tell you. In fact, some of the, the testimonies are mind-blowing. You won't believe it. Let me give you one small one. Okay. I, want, I was doing a program in a place called Adonishaka. All right? Mm. It was a crusade. And after some time, usually, the last night of the preparatory stage, we lock the heavens and tell the rain not to fall. And it has worked for us. But on this particular night, suddenly it started showering. They started drizzle, showering and all that. I looked up, I looked at the sky. The sky was clear. The stars were there. Then I was wondering what was going on. So I got up and walked, I, was, I started praying. Okay. I walked to the edge of the perimeter where we're having the crusade. As I crossed there, there was no drizzle. The rain was not falling there. I walked back to the other side. As I got to the edge of the perimeter on the other side, there was no drizzle. Ah, it's okay. Somebody wants to do something. <laughs> and so immediately I commanded the rain to change course. Immediately. I commanded the rain, wherever you are coming from, change course. In other words, leave where we are dry. Let it be raining on the other side. And within five minutes, it changed course. That's a testimony. Wow. That's really and, miraculous. And you have many of such testimonies, you know, in this uh, book. But the greatest testimony is that in every community we went to do the program, about 31 or so communities, God did awesome things. Awesome things you cannot understand. When I say awesome things, awesome things. The society, let me start with my own community, Abavo. Okay. When we started the program in 1998, my community was riddled with poverty. There were no motorcycles. The motorcycles that were there were very old. And they had... What, what, what year actually was this? Was 1998. Okay, 1998. Yes. Okay. And everybody was riding an old rickety bicycle. 
Mm -hmm. And then the first day of the, of the crusade, I brought a man from Lagos who has never been to my, has never been to Abao, Solomon Akpenero. We call him Ugidigidi. You find his name everywhere. Yes. Ugidigidi. And midway through his program, he said, wait, you will have a market in this place? We say yes. He said the market has been sold. Ah, we didn't, I didn't know that they sell markets. He said the market has been sold. And it is such a way, in such a way that those that trade on the day before the market, they collect all the money. And then those that trade on the market day, they go home empty-handed, even though they collected money. That money is, in my language, we call it ufori. Ufori means em uh, emptiness. Hmm. Ah, and so we were, we were amazed. But we didn't so stop there. That revelation. Yes. Mm. So after the program, we now drove to the market. And then we prayed and we sacked the powers controlling the market. At the time we prayed, the price of Gary was 250 naira per basin. The following market after the prayer, the price of Gary rose 500 to 500 naira. And it kept on rising every market day until it got to 4,500 naira. I'm telling you. And so before you knew it, the prosperity. But you used to, you used to take your time. Yeah, I mean, you took your time to, you know, monitor the trend. You know, as as relates to sales, like for you to know that yes, it was this amount. Oh yes, and the pastors amount, were telling me. The, the pastors okay. were telling me. Okay. Uh, they were happy, because before you knew it, at that time. It's good sales for them, you know. Yeah. After producing, you have to sell well. Yes. The, the, the women were losing because to produce a, a basin of gari is you spend more than two hundred and fifty naira. That's true. And yet you sell it all because the ruling powers have put the price at that to fifty naira. And the same you know is repeated in many of the communities. In Umutu, is it Umutu, is it Umaja, is it Akoku? Everywhere we went. Markets have been, oh at, at, at our mind. They have a market built, but nobody trades in the market. They stay on the road. And they just squander their, their product because they want to get money to buy things. Mm. And so we visited the market and sacked the ruling powers. Today, if you go to Amman, you can see prosperity. So when you say the ruling powers, what, 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 what do you really mean by that? Now, there are two realities. The spiritual reality is more real than the physical reality. Okay. And what that means is that whatever happens in the physical realm, first of all takes place in the spiritual realm. It is settled there. And if you do not know, you will be living a life different from what God plans for you. And when I mentioned that the market of our mind was sold, one old man, very old man, he was at that meeting. So he came to me after the program. He said, sir, how did you know that the market had been sold? I said, I, I, I received it from the realm of the spirit that the market, market had been sold. He folded his hand and shouted, he said his father told him many years ago. What I'm telling you, many years ago, must be more than 30 years, mm. that the market has been sold. So we went and bought back the market. And today, <laughs> as you say, history, the, the mm. story. You know, more like, um, you know, I'm, I mean, am I at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know the place? More like, yes, because okay. I do, I know the place. Okay. Well, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so can we actually say that um, the testimony of John 14, 6, Abiding Ministry, Volume 1 and Volume 2, yes. um, is basically emphasizing the power of healing as it relates to the Almighty God. Yes, yes. So if we were to rename, if we were to rename this book, for instance, uh, some would say I'm going to rebrand it then, or maybe the forward of this book. If there should be like a forward and a forward, mm -hmm. what should be this name? Do you think if I should come up with the name, the healing power, of God. You will be correct. You will okay, be correct. Because, <laughs> yeah, because the communities are sick. Okay. If you like, sick. Why are they sick? They are not living the destiny that God expects them to live. Yes. The powers that rule the place have held down their, their, their resources, their prosperity, and all of that. There's no community we went to that didn't have a testimony. Mm -hmm. i give you one example. We went to a place called Ebu. And at the time we went to Ebu, Ebu has uh, 
has a general hospital. Now, the indigenous of Ebu don't attend their hospital. They prefer to trek to Ezi, which is about three, four kilometers from there. Okay. All right, and we really don't have um, so much okay. to digress, you know, <laughs> to digress into other areas. But I do know that um, the content of this book is basically on uh, testimonies. And to let you know, amazingly, that um, the healing power of God um, is actually... Uh, top-notch here yes. when you look at this book or you try and read it from one page to another well some persons that do not believe that there is healing well think again there because is. if you look there at is. read this book not just on the cover page you read it uh, they say what's in your heart is what you get so when you open your heart to read it you'll be sure that at the end of the day you say well God really assists this part in healing yes thank you so much sir for coming on uh, the program today it's always a delight. There's about the third episode on you, and um, we cannot exhaust it all on both books, so I want you to do that. Well, thanks for coming again. <laughs> this is about like so the fastest much. 25 <laughs> minutes on TV. <laughs> it the is program, worth it. I'm telling you, the program is booked to us, yes, and uh, I do know that right on Wednesday, we'll treat another moment uh, the borders on authors. So if you're an author, and you are also a sculptor, a, a fine artist, you can be part of this program. Yes, you just um, call the number 081-3116-5050 to be a guest on this program. Don't worry, just get back to me and trust you'll be on the program. This is Jill Wilson. Thanks for being there. Bye-bye. Literary icons only on the program Book to Art, Dot Television Asaba, after 10 a.m. every Wednesday. Do the arts stay smart.